Speaker. Um, Deputy Speaker, on the first constitutionally enshrined uh, First Nations voice, uh, I remember back at Gama in northeast Arnhem Land, where uh, myself and the member for Lingari uh, and uh, Senator Pat Dodson, Senator Melandiri McCarthy, we sat around a table with the then Prime Minister uh, Malcolm Turnbull. Um, and it was pretty sad because there was a leader who didn't have the fortitude to take this issue and basically have the debate, uh, advocate for this very important uh, issue that had been quite clearly, 80% of the respondents um, had said very clearly uh, that a First Nations voice was required. Um, now those opposite obviously got rid of uh, that Prime Minister anyway, and um, despite slamming the door on what the statement actually called for, the Uluru Statement from the Heart, uh, the government has engaged in a consultative process on the design of an Indigenous voice. We're currently in the midst of uh, that process. Um, and as I've mentioned, 80% uh, of these sub submissions, uh, over 3,000 uh, submissions, um, said that, uh, and they are incredibly important, um, said that we, the First Nations National Constitutional Convention uh, and the First Nations voices that have contributed to this process, uh, processes have acted in good faith with the best interests of their own communities at heart. And what they said clearly is a constitutionally uh, enshrined voice uh, is what is required. So the government needs to uh, reciprocate from the strong uh, voice in those submissions. So I offer two questions to the minister. Uh, firstly, it's my understanding that up to 80% of the submissions support the enshrinement of the Indigenous voice in the Constitution, and if this is not the case, uh, then how many submissions do support the enshrinement of the Indigenous voice into our Constitution uh, from this consultation process? And secondly, if the figure of supporting submissions is as high as 80%, will the government commit to listening to the people and acting to enshrine the Indigenous voice in our nation's constitution. Now, I think, Mr Deputy Speaker, those questions are very important. Will this process that was entered into in good faith by First Nations people around this country be honoured? Uh, we obviously on this side hope that it will and look forward to the minister.